everyone this is three questions with holly elliott there we go here we go holly okay for those of you don't, for those of you don't know holly holly is uh, a teacher i met years ago in visalia california and i actually remember visalia very very well and it was a very wonderful group so if anyone from visalia is listening <laughs> i'll give you, a, give you a little shout out and so um, I've actually connected with Holly for years and she is a, a, a current sixth grade teacher in Visalia and, and also like kind of my fitness guru. I'm not going to lie to you. You're kind of my fitness guru. So I like, I love watching you all the stuff on Instagram. You've like really helped me, um, with, with my stuff. So that, that's something that I'm, I'm really passionate about. And I really love how you kind of are finding that. And I don't know if this term, cause I'm going to ask you about this, the finding the balance of like teaching every single day taking care of your health and how that's beneficial. So thanks for being on the podcast. It's Sunday. I Thank appreciate you for your time. having me. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. Yeah. And you, you are, you like, and I, we're going to have you on for two podcasts and um, this one you're going to hear on a Thursday. The next one's going to be on a Sunday, but make sure, uh, especially if you kind of want to get your health in check and you are in education, make sure you follow Holly. Uh, her Instagram is linked down below. And, and I'm going to tell you, sometimes you make me mad. Cause I'm like, ah, oh, I gotta like, get better at this stuff. You push me really hard. So I love it. Thank you so much. So we're going to do three questions with Holly. And so because this is kind of like a health education mix, I'm, I'm going to go away from my typical three questions. Um, I'm going to use one of them. And it's probably a little bit because um, this is something that I'm thinking about because Allison Apsey and I have uh, the, the Prince, what makes a great principal coming out book coming out very soon. And so I asked Holly if she could think of a a principal that really inspired her and boom, she was like, yeah, I got one right away. So Holly, if you think of a principal that's really inspired you, like who's someone you think of and why? Well, I'm going to try not to cry when I talk about this, but his name is Doug Cardoza and he's like a second dad to me. Um, so I'm in a kind of unique situation at my school. I'm 34 years old and I've actually worked on the same campus that I work at right now since I was 18 years old. I started when I was in the after school program, which is called the heart program. Hmm. I was an instructional aide. I was a behavioral aide. Um, I've done a lot with this school from a young age. So Doug was kind of, like I said, like my second dad role model. He really believed in me. And I think the reason that he really stands out is because of him believing in me. And um, so when I was 23 years old, and I was just getting into like finishing up my bachelor's. I wasn't even in a credential program yet. There was a sixth grade opening at our school. And he, <laughs> so funny, he interviewed however many people he interviewed and he turned them all down because he was like, I had you in my back pocket. I wanted you to have this job. I've seen how you work on campus mm. with the students in the classroom. And it was really neat because a lot of the teachers, I made great connections with them. And they didn't just see me as an aide. They knew that I was transitioning into become a, a teacher. And they were like, you want to teach a lesson? I'm like, sure. And then he would pop in and see me teaching a lesson. And I think that was like sealing the deal for him. So I love it. You tell me, you know, I had you in my back pocket. So I had to at the time, and I know it's it's really common now for teachers to be interns on PIPs, STIPs, whatever your district calls it. So you're not fully credentialed, but you're just kind of on an internship. Mm -hmm. So this is really common now. But when I started teaching when I was 23, 24, um, that was not common at all. So he went through the interview process. He fully credentialed teachers. He said, nope, nope, nope. And then he was like, okay, we're going to try to get you in. So I started off as a long-term sub in this sixth grade position. I started the school year and I had to have the superintendent and I had to have the vice superintendent, him and a board member come into my room and watch me teach. And when I tell you the pressure was on, that was probably one of the most intense days of my teaching career ever. So they came, they watched me teach and they said, okay, we, we believe in you too, because Doug Cardoza had a really good name in the district. We believe in you too. So we'll mm. let her try this. We'll let her have this position. So I was on what was called a stip and then a pip and then an internship until I was fully credentialed. So <laughs> yeah, I went through arm. a few years of, mm -hmm, of not being credentialed until I finally was. So I was going to school. I had just had my um, son Maddox, who is going to be 10 in April. So it was, it was all like a crazy transition for me. But anyway... Mm. He believed in me so wholeheartedly and he was so supportive my entire career of teaching until he left. He actually left and became the, um, the superintendent for about a year and then he retired himself. 
Um, but if you're listening, Doug, you know I love you and you have been my biggest role model in education. And guess what, Doug? Get a shout out button. There we go. I love it. That, that you know, so it's actually interesting that you say that the, um, in What Makes a Great Principal, we actually have teachers writing um, the majority of the book and talking about great principles they had and why they were great. And the theme, not only from the book, but this podcast over the years is something very similar is that someone actually had that not only belief in you, but actually probably in, you know, kind of talking about this, they'll actually put you in situations you might not quite be, you think you're not quite ready for that. You actually have to kind of push yourself and that helps you get to that next level. So oh, yeah. I absolutely, I, I love that. That That's a powerful, so I hope, hope Doug, you're listening right now because that's a wonderful thing. And no offense, but this is probably true. Probably a bunch of people got that story about Doug, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah. Right? yeah. And, and I love that because a lot of times, you know, yeah. if they, they make you like great principles, make you feel like you're the only one, but they do mm-hmm. that for so many people, which I think is yeah. really, really powerful. So I kind of alluded to this question. Um, we, we do like a little pre-show kind of just kind of, thinking about things we're going to talk about. And I didn't, I said, I'm going to ask you this, but I didn't want to know your answer. I wanted to wait for this too. And so one of the things that you hear a lot about in education and, you know, we want to kind of like, I I want to kind of do like a, like a health and wellness podcast with you on this too. You hear about balance and you know, what balance looks like and how you do that. So like, when you hear that term, is this something you're focused on? Like when you hear the term balance in education, because you're really, um, I know you're disciplined. I know that's something that mm-hmm. is really, and we kind of talked about that. So like when you hear that term balance, like what do you think of that in, especially in relation to like taking care of your own health and, and being an educator? Balance. Well, I'm, I love sweets. So that's something that I'm not <laughs> going to give up. Right. And no matter how hard I work out, no matter how you know intense the workout is, I'm going to reward myself in a way. And if it's going to be eating a whole bag of marshmallows, I'm going to eat a whole bag of marshmallows. Right. I'm just kidding, not the whole bag. But you know, I think it's really important to stay consistent and to to have results and to be realistic that you have to have that balance because you can see a thousand fad diets going on, and anyone who's ever been on a diet, you find that they don't stick to it. They don't stick to that plan. But if you give yourself a little bit of a reward here and there, whether that's, you know, you're, um, if you're a salty person, you like your fast food, or if you are a sweet person like me and you like your treats, you give yourself a little treat and then you're more likely to stay on track because, you know, same for our kids. I don't restrict my kids from eating a piece of candy because if I've restricted them so much that when they go to school and there's a party, they're not going to understand how to have self-control and they're going to eat so much at once. So it's kind of like you get your little fix and you're fine, but I'm huge on balance because I don't, I mean, it's just, it's just the way that it has to be honestly to, yeah. to, to stay consistent. Yeah. That, hey, by the way, if you want to eat a whole bag of marshmallows, <laughs> do I got the bag of marshmallows for you. There's a, there's actually, they're expensive though. They're like six bucks for a bag and they're not many, many of them. There's a thing called max sweets and there's like no sugar. And now this is my oh. like little obsession right now is these max okay. sweet marshmallows. So max sweets, if you're listening, <laughs> you can sponsor the podcast because they are so <laughs> good. Um, but they're like, they got collagen and stuff like that. But, oh, nice. um, you know, and, and I, I so appreciate that you say that because I, you and I were talking about before and, um, like I, I've been following you for a while and I know, and you've seen kind of like the transformation of like what I've done over the last little while. Mm-hmm. And really the thing for me was, uh, I have always worked out. People know this about me. It's the eating was my struggle. Mm -hmm. And basically I said, what can I do? How can I change my eating habits that I can actually stick with them like a year from now? So I'm not trying to do something. So it has to be things that I enjoy. And yeah. And you know, you can, and there's like, I think there feels like there's so many more options and stuff like that too, but Um, that actually, that, that's something that's really important to me is that it's not about like cutting everything out that brings you joy or happiness. But I also, uh, know that if I go too hard on that stuff and like probably one of my issues for eating over the years was when I was a kid, like we never had sweets in the house. So when we got them, boom, gone, right? Like we, and that that caused, you know, that's like caused some unhealthy eating habits. So I appreciate you sharing that because I think, you know, that, and I'm looking forward to kind of talking to you more about this stuff, like on kind of how you do these things. And I know you, you told me your alarm, you set up at three 50 in the morning, which is pretty early. Mm -hmm. early. We'll we'll talk talk about that. Okay. So 
there's a lot of people that are listening to this right now that are either, um, I don't know, saying trying to get their health back on track. And I, and I'm sure you agree with this because I've seen, and one of the things I love, and I was telling Holly this too before, you're very serious about your fitness, but you're also very, like you joke on your Instagram. And I love it because there's like, you got some like uh, fitness stuff, you got some mental health stuff. Um, you got some comedy in there and you got, you know, stuff that goes on in your classroom. So I, the, the intersection of what you do really, I think, you know, really beautifully connects with like what a lot of people are going through in education right now. So someone's listening to this right now and they're trying to maybe pick up some healthier habits or, you know, try to make maybe, you know, just get healthier. And I, I think not just physically, but mentally too, because I noticed that. Uh, my mental health improved significantly when my physical health improved and I don't, it's kind of like, uh, you know, was chicken and the egg. I don't know which one took care of the other, but there, there, there is a connection between the two. So someone's trying to get started. What's like the first thing that you would suggest and you know, everyone's different, but like from your experience, what's something that you'd suggest like a first thing, a first step someone could take to kind of help with that intersection of, you know, getting back into shape or, getting their health back on track and being an absolutely artist. having, having a plan. Mm -hmm. I think that you people in general will fail if they don't have a plan because they don't have something to look at something to check off something to make sure that they're holding themselves accountable. And it doesn't have to be a rigorous plan because like I said, I do believe in balance. It can just be a starting point to say, mm -hmm. I'm going to go out. I'm going to work out three days a week. These are my three days. I'm going to work out. These are the workouts I'm going to do on those three days. I'm going to have my meals set up for the week on Sunday. I'm going to do my shopping. I'm going to prepare. Even if I'm not cooking everything on that Sunday, I'm going to make sure I have everything ready to go for the week. I'm going to make sure my protein is high, but I'm also going to give myself grace. I love it. You know, okay. I'm going to tell you. So I, you know, I'm more of a runner and you're more into weights and I know you, yeah. you've done both. Uh, I write out what I'm running each day and I write it for the week and there's no check mark that feels better than checking off. Oh my gosh, it, right? it is totally. like, it is like the most satisfying check mark oh, yeah. you've ever done. Like it feels so good. I don't know. Like I, that check mark, like I got a little list of things like I do every day, but my health stuff, when I check it off, like, especially yeah. like, Hey, I did like, say I did a 10 mile run and just doing that. Oh, oh yeah. I felt good. I felt good. So I love that advice. It feels good to say it. I ran 10 miles. Does that feel so good to say? <laughs> it does feel good to say, right? And I, you know, and like, it took a while to get to that point, right? Where mm -hmm. I, I do have to recover stuff and, you know, have a little ice on my knees right now, but whatever. So I, I love it. So Holly's going to have a lot more of this stuff. And I'm so grateful that you took the time and, uh, and, and, and you, you know, as a parent, you know, as an educator and doing all this stuff too, I really appreciate all you have to share. So make sure you, t you listen to the podcast. Holly, thanks for, so much for taking a Sunday to spend some time with me. So absolutely. Really Thank you everyone. so much. I appreciate it. Yeah, of course. Everyone make sure you follow Holly and she's gonna, she'll bring you something gold. I promise you. So she's really helped yeah. me in my journey too. So everyone look forward to the next one. Yeah.